we're here with our last video tutorial of this eight part series. I'm going to be going over how to save out your projects, export settings, and then I'm going to be talking a little bit about the digital illustration industry and my specific role as a medical illustrator. So firstly, you're going to require some information from your client on what they need this illustration for. Are they using it on the web, in a pamphlet, is it being printed, is it going to be presented on a PowerPoint? These are all important things because they will dictate how you save your file and also what settings we're going to use in the image size. So if I look right now, you can see my file has a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. This is pretty good for printing. Um, I could even go as high as 600 if I wanted to. But the higher your DPI, the more memory your file is going to take up. I can actually decrease this to 72 if I'm using this for an online platform. But before I do that, I'm actually going to uh, uncheck this resample button. And that's going to make sure that it doesn't reduce my actual number of pixels and make it too small. So type in 72. And you can see now the number of pixels that I have is really quite high. So I'm going to drop this down for my height to make it about 2000 pixels. So we've reduced the number of megabytes for our file size already by over half, which is great. I'm going to make sure that my bicubic sharpener for reduction is on. That's for if I'm decreasing the file size. If I wanted to make my image larger, it's pretty difficult to do that when you're dealing with rasterized images, but they do have some image preservation techniques that you can use, like this Preserve Detail and Bicubic Smoother. I'm going to make sure that it's on Bicubic Sharpener and then just click OK. So that's reduced my image size, and then I could just go to File, Save As, and save it to my desktop as either a JPEG, a PNG could work, even a TIFF. I want to make sure that I'm saving my PSD so that I can go back to my file and have my layers if I wanted to make any changes to it. Your TIFF is going to hold the most information and then a JPEG and a PNG or more compressed versions. You could save it as a PNG if you wanted to have a transparent background, for example, and to do that, I would have to go in and clean up a lot of the um, layers in here, specifically adding more clipping masks and then removing my background. This way I could plug it into a colored background on a website or anything like that. Now you see it's showed up on my desktop preview it and the gray means that there's a transparent background present. So that's saving and exporting and resizing your files. Now I'm just going to talk a little bit about my experience as a medical illustrator and how I've used Photoshop in the field. So I've been working in the field of medical illustration for almost six years now and I've been using Photoshop almost daily during that time. I didn't actually start learning Photoshop though until my master's degree and before that I only really drew with graphite, carbon, and then I painted with watercolor and gouache as well. As a medical illustrator I've created a lot of educational content for surgeons learning new techniques as well as for the court to try to make mechanisms of injury more understandable. There's obviously so much more I could say about the world of medical illustration but I think I'll save that for another video. Beyond the world of medical illustration, I've also used Photoshop to create illustrations for games, book covers, and also my own illustrated children's books. We as Indigenous people have such a rich history of storytelling and digital illustration is just one way we are able to continue that. I'm really just so grateful to share my skills through create to learn and I really hope you enjoyed this series. For more tips and tricks, and to connect with the Biocom Hive community, please check out the Facebook group. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to follow Create to Learn on Instagram and hashtag Create to Learn for more tutorials.